Hello everybody, my name is Marc Alochet. I am a researcher at Ecole Polytechnique in France. I am very happy to present the book, The Odyssey of Dacia Spring, Story and Lessons of an Impossible Project. This book was written in cooperation with Christophe Midler, another researcher at Ecole Polytechnique, and Christophe de Charentenay, who used to be an engineer at Renault and was involved in the development of this project. In 1991, the machine that changed the world was published and the car industry was confident in its future. But 30 years later, the landscape has changed. Despite several major crises, the automotive market has continued to grow globally, even if the current situation is worse than ever in the recent years. But innovation, as described by Schumpeter, on one side, entrepreneur who proposed an innovation, on the other side, customers to decide to adopt it or not, accordingly to their needs and usages, is not what's happening anymore for the automotive industry. The impact of vehicle on traffic jam, casualties, or pollution are so high that the political powers want to control or at least frame the trajectory of the automotive industry. However, the precise form of this technological breakthrough is not yet decided, and we can identify four different variables. Nature of the industry itself, actors involved in this societal innovation, product strategy, international cooperation, globalized innovation strategy. These books aim to answer this question through the detailed analysis of an electric vehicle project whose code name is KZV developed in cooperation by Renault in China from 2016 to 2019 and marketed in Europe since 2000, the beginning of 2021 under the nameplate Spring within the Dacia brand. Why is Spring Project an interesting case study? If Renault has been a first mover for electrification at the beginning of the 2010s, this is not the case in China where he had had many unsuccessful attempts to enter the market with IC vehicles. Developing an electric vehicle for the Chinese market is therefore a new opportunity for Renault. This is also an unprecedented context of cooperation between companies, competitors, by the way, from different countries and regions of the world, Renault, French group, Nissan, the Japanese group, and Dongfeng, a public Chinese automaker. And these companies get together to design a product which is based on a technical concept developed in India, which will be marketed under five brands in China. The Chinese market is caught in a dive dynamic. On the one side, you have the Chinese regulation on IVs. On the other side, the fierce competition between automakers who are putting new products on the market at a public space. This project also brings a strong contradiction a hybridization of two lineage affordable vehicles on electric vehicles. This is a typical example of a transition to electrification under government pressure in all regions of the world. And this is a case that shows the importance of project resilience under high uncertainty and crisis context. We will see how this project moved from risk management in China to launching vehicle in Europe. The summary, so the story of KZD in, in a nutshell, lesson of innovation strategy, project management, engineering design development process, industrial policy on entrepreneurship. The odyssey of KZD is clearly a navigation in a raging terrain. The Chinese market is the most important one. I've already said that uh, Renault is a late mover. So the creation of a GV with Dongfeng and the study of electrification of Quid, a 3,500 vehicle developed for the Indian market, are two opportunities to enter this market. As there is a convergence between the selling price on one side and the manufacturing cost, Carlos Ghosn decided this project to accelerate the conquest of the Chinese market. But this project, the preliminary project, is very complicated because each of the three companies Renault, Dongfeng, and Nissan has its own project, its own platform, or want its project to be adopted by the cooperation. The Chinese market is not so easy to understand. On the very low end, you have low-speed EVs, which are non-official 
PEVs without a plate, not very expensive, but very low performances as well. On the other side, you have the mainstream BVs with high prices, 120,000 RMBs. So it's difficult to position where you want the product to be. Another point which makes it very difficult is the Chinese regulatory. There are three different regulations. We'll explain them later on, but they move very quickly. And it's very difficult to know what is going to be the expectation of the public regulation in six months or one year. Anyway, all the companies agree to go for the electrification of QEDV, which become KZD project. And this was a very difficult decision. So the first thing to do is to have an innovative framework for a cooperative design. The first one, the first point is to create a company, Electric Golden Triangle, where both Renault, Nissan, and Dongfeng bring some cash on some industry contribution in terms of license, resources, knowledges. This company is responsible for developing the product and selling this product to GVs, which are in charge of developing the product and of selling the product. These GVs are from Renault, Dongfeng, and Nissan. This project has a very significant leverage effect as we consider that the entry ticket is roughly divided by eight in comparison with a second industrialization of a vehicle. Um, this is a cooperation between French, Japanese, Chinese companies, but also engineers coming from India. So this is very important to have an organization which takes into consideration the knowledge of competencies of these different partners coming from different countries and organize a multicultural cooperation between these different people. The development is very complicated in this context because there is an inexorable inflation of performance due to the quick evolution of the Chinese regulation on the pace of introduction of new products on the market. It's not so easy to integrate a 200 kilograms battery in a 750 kilogram platform. There is application of design to cost. I will come back to that later on. The battery supplier just at the middle of the project who demands a 45 increase of price of the battery and also modernization of the plant with robotization of the body assembly shop. But anyway, we can consider that the job is done because the cost of the product is about two thirds of the cost of the same product developed in Europe. And in this complicated context, the schedule is only three months delayed to what was initially planned. Therefore, in April 2019, Renault INEO is presented at Hawaii Motor Show and the vehicle has achieved 5% of its segment by the end of 2019. But very quickly, at the end of 2019 or beginning of 2020, there are many opposing ways for sale in China. Drug stop operation, this is bankruptcy because there is a failure of all the new ICF product introduced on the market. The GVs don't order vehicles as they have committed to do so. There is a COVID-19 on the more and more stringent regulation which makes that the vehicle is no more compliant with the minimum range for autonomy. In this situation, EGT, takes very radical and rapid decisions. The first one is to increase the vehicle range up to 300 kilometers. That will be done in six months, which is very fast, and also to sell the vehicle in Europe. The launch of the vehicle in Europe is what we call the magic triangle of quid. Low price, less than 18,000 euros in France before application of subsidies. Low mass, less than 1,000 kilos, and a range of more than 300 kilometers in urban cycles. Four different products, Dacia Spring for personal customers, Dacia Cargo for professionals, and the vehicle is also proposed for car rental and car sharing. There are more than 50,000 orders by the end of January 2021. The vehicle is in top three sales at the beginning of the year 2022 with Tesla Model 3 and Renault Zoe and there are more than six months between the order and the delivery of the vehicle. But 
what is this project? If we stop the movie at the Chinese stage, this is a terrible failure. If we look at what's happening in Europe, we can also consider this is an incredible success. So this is to try to, honest, to answer to these questions that we'll now have a look at the different lessons we can get for this project. The first one is a lesson in innovation strategy. Multinational companies, such as automakers, the competitive advantage depends on both the ability to have relevant product that find their customers in local market and also deploy them rapidly on a global scale. This is a notion of double embeddedness of innovation processes. In this context, what has been done is what is called Renov reverse innovation. First point is innovation in low end products versus innovation in high end products. And the second point is development of new products or innovative platforms adapted to emerging markets versus development of product in the mature markets, which are then adapted and exported to emerging markets. This is also what is known as lineage management, which is the optimization of learning grants generated by the performance of the company design function. The very first example is the Dasha lineage, which started with the Logan at 5,000 euros at this time in 2004. And now you have five different products sold everywhere in the world. And Dacia is one of the only brands whose sales to private customers are increasing year after year. The second example is Quid, which was first developed in India, then adapted in Brazil with new products derived from Quid in India. Electric version developed in China, and now the vehicle is sold in Europe with what seems to be a great success. How to make it happen is what we are going to discuss now. The first one, it's about project management. There is a strong move between a project which is led by a business function, like product planning or engineering, to a program management organization. The first step was the project management organization, which means autonomy of decision, integrated project team in the same location, project open to suppliers, integration of innovation in the project. But there is a strong limitation to project management. The project management stopped with the end of the project. And there is nobody concerned by the capitalization of development of the asset created by the breakthrough of his first project. There is nobody to take that to carry it as a strong actor in the field. So the second step is a program management organization and the scope is therefore extends beyond the project to include all the derivative from the same platform and the global responsibility for market decision of all the vehicle concerns. There are three main advantages. You have business development skill combined with in-depth expertise in product and process engineering. You broaden the scope of the project function through a mechanism of linking successive projects and there is capitalization, valorization of the asset of the first project thanks to permanent exploration of new business and incremental investment of adaptation. But the project in this specific case, the cooperation between French, Japanese and Chinese company is also an actor of strategic and cultural integration. Interfirm cooperation is mandatory now, but there is quite a high level of failure, 40 to 50 percent. What is obvious is that the project is not an island. What is meant by Hongwall is that say, you need to consider the history of the companies and the people working on this project. And for the KZD project, the question of cooperation and coordination between people with different national history is a major one. If you have a look at the characterization of French, Chinese, and Indian types in obsolete typology, you see that there are very different characters. So therefore, it's very important to be able to have good cooperation between people from these different nations. The other point is that the project is a producer of a new identity. People are coming from Bruno, from Nissan, from Dongfeng, 
that in this context, they work to the project. As the cooperation is only limited to a new product, the compromise between the different business standards of the companies are arbitrated by criteria related to uh, importance for the customers and the identity of the project replaces the initial identity characters of the cooperating companies and also of the nations. The next point is about lesson in the engineering design development process. Design to cost and innovative development processes are the other key elements of the reverse innovation topic. Design to cost mean firstly define the essential requirement to bring the product up to the level of competition, regulatory, regulatory compliance, security, minimum functionality, and identify obvious unique selling points that beyond the price will differentiate the product from the competition and will make customer buy it. One of the key uh, functions of design to cost is to take the price target as an intangible starting point, like a design compass. This is what I've briefly introduced. In this situation, considering the selling price, what, have, what has been done during the preliminary project was a cost grain calculation, considering the cost of the vehicle, the high voltage battery, and the electric power train, concluding that the manufacturing cost excluding depreciation was consistent with the expected selling price. And now this price target is the compass of the design to come. Design to cost starts at the preliminary study phase with local suppliers to take advantage of the cost competitiveness and continues till the achievement of each target price is achieved. If we have a look at the drawing of the bottom right of the screen, what we can see is that this strategy is also very agile. You make a request for quotation for suppliers, and very often you get their feedback, you send a new request of quotation, and you apply what is called fractal innovation to explore and implement solution to meet ambitious and uncertain cost value target. We fit the deadline of fast development project. Fractal innovation means that you look at each component of the price and at each nature of cost, from GNA to cost of raw material, cost of process, cost of logistics, and so on. This is also a lesson of industrial policy. We made a comparison between European and Chinese regulation for EVs and four topics, emission regulation, support for the battery industry, deployment of charging networks and demand side provision. Just here we have an example of the evolution of requirement. In Europe, the evolution of gram of CO2 per kilometer between 2015 and 2035, moving from 130 to zero in 2035, and it has been voted by the European Parliament last week. On the other side, you have the evolution of the corporate avial average fuel consumption. And we can roughly say that if you decrease the fuel consumption, you also decrease the emission of CO2 per kilometer. And you see there is a strong reduction in China from 6.7 to 4. But the governance between Europe and China is very different. For a very long time, Europe has remained on cord in a governance which is based on fair economic competition, which is really one of the motto of the European Commission, technological neutrality, which means that the Commission sets some targets and lets the industry define what are the best technology to achieve the target, organization of medium and long-term visibility of objectives, and also the sovereignty of each member state. But in 2015, there was a pivot the decision to clearly move to battery electric vehicle and the light decision just confirm it. So this is a stronger intrusion on the AO and the European industry denounces the fact that there is no more technological neutrality. But anyway, 
this governance of stray regulation is struggling until now to find a dynamic which is adapted to the massive and rapid deployment of an electric mobility system. On the other side, China has developed or deployed what we have called an administrative Darwinism, which considers a combination of, of course, the traditional regime of socialist systems, an ability to activate precise and powerful action variables to pull the industrial trajectory of companies towards improving supply side performance. The example I have given is suddenly a decision to increase the minimum autonomy of the vehicle to get a subsidy. This is a way to force automakers to have better and better performances for vehicles. And this is also a capacity for rapid adaptation to adjust regulation. Another example, there is, um, again, regulation for what is called the NEV credit have been tightened at the very beginning of 2022. And this decision was taken because the Chinese government was considering that the improvement in terms of corporate average fuel consumption was not fast enough. So they have decided to tighten once more the regulation to force, again, industry to improve their performance faster. So just to give some figures about the lesson of industrial policies, or so you have the sale of plug-in in 2020, 2021, Europe and China are the biggest market, with China taking a very strong lead in the second half of 2001, with more than 1 million sold in Europe. The plug-in stocks are about 40% in China, 30% in Europe at the end of 2020. When you have 500 new energy vehicle manufacturers in China in 2019, in Europe, you only have Uncoban Soyev, and very recently, from the beginning of this year, Tesla is also producing in, the, in Germany. But where there is a fierce battle to come, this is in terms of battery. No doubt that nowadays China is the first producer of battery for electric vehicles. But if you consider the announcement from Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Renault, and Stellantis in Europe, they aim to produce, to have gigafactories, which should, whose the production should exceed 600 gigawatt hour by 2030. So we can expect a very fierce battle in terms of electric battery for electric vehicles between China and Europe. This is also a lesson in entrepreneurship because this is very difficult to conquer an unknown market with innovative products. And this is the concept of effectuation, which can be defined by four characteristics. The first one is opening of possibilities. The example is why don't we proceed to electrification of quid? Successive short terms to carry out some learning. This is the adaptation of quid to the Brazilian market. There is a prudence in conduct of trajectory, economic, economical use of available resources, and also a pivoting capacity, which make it possible to avoid an insurmountable obstacle. So uh, Renault and EO is not selling well in China for the different reasons I have evoked. So there is a pivot on sell the car in Europe. This is also entrepreneurship which is the driving force being pro behind program management. I have already explained that on how it is essential to any lineage management. But the other point, which is very important, is design performance to support entrepreneurship program. In a very conventional way of the automotive industry, the product planning strategy, the design of vehicle, is made in the headquarter of the company. So it can be uh, in Germany, in Munich, or it can be in Detroit or USA or in Paris, in France. But the idea is that usually companies have a, their main techno center, which is located very close to the headquarters, and they may have some associated engineering organization where they have operation. What has been done here is a move from end-centric organization to project-centric organization. 
the Renault Quid was developed at Renault Nissan Techno Center in India, was adapted in the Brazilian Renault Techno Center, and the electrification of Quid has been developed in China. The corporate techno center is just here, if I can say so, to support the development of the project, but is not anymore responsible of the development of the project. But the main advantage of doing so is that you are sure to really have a product which is adapted by the local market because the engineering is deeply embedded in the local market. And the last point is the governance on bid dexterity, or how to encourage or maintain the coexistence of innovative projects on more traditional projects. Of course, all the projects of a company can be as innovative as the one I have described. That wouldn't be possible. So the key role of the general management in this situation is maintaining the cohabitation and the balance between business as usual operation, which are absolutely necessary for the growth of the company, and also the actors or structure dedicated to the exploration of innovative projects to design new markets, new products. So I would like to thank you for your attention. The French version of the vehicle, of the product, sorry, <laughs> the book, I've said it, is already available. The title in French is very similar to the one I've given in English. And there is an English version this autumn, and it will be published by Taylor and Francis. And I am now ready for your question.